So far as I know, the following has absolutely nothing to do with the coronavirus epidemic. Uh, it's about a book called Clockers. Someone highly recommended that I read a book, Clockers. So I did get a copy of it. Holding it in my hands and flipping through it, I was both daunted and dismayed. I thought maybe I should wimp out and watch the movie, made, I think, by Spike Lee. I was daunted by the size of the book, mammoth weighing in at 599 pages. Why do I keep getting saddled with these enormous books? And dismayed, because I knew it was about or set in the world of young black drug dealers and the cops who work that beat. This is not something I care that much about. I watched the first season of The Wire, much celebrated, even revered, and while I appreciated the excellence of each show, there was also a limit to how much I wanted to know or experience concerning the black drug underground in Baltimore. And that's why I only watched the first season. Good as it was, I'd had enough. This is also why I did not watch a moment of Downton Abbey, another big hit. I wasn't interested in the British upper crust and the servants who wait on them. In spite of this, I did read the book. Yes, it was a long haul, but it was also brilliant, especially in regard to the verisimilitude. The details, the depth, was amazing and completely convincing. When the author cast a scene, he laid it out to the tiniest pebble, litter scattered around on the ground, and sprayed graffiti. When it came to interiors, he would inventory a room, taking it all in, leaving nothing out. The same was true for his characters, particularly the leads. You know their thoughts, their tics, aches, desires, regrets, memories. Tom Wolfe used to complain that the modern American fiction had moved away from realism, a direction he deplored. I hope, for his sake, that he read this book before he died. I think he would have approved and admired it immensely. Maybe he'd even been a bit jealous. The author is also well aware of my objections. Why is the book so long? A cop in it says, the shortest distance between two points is the truth. For everybody, virtually no one in this book tells the truth. And if they do, no one believes them. They lie outright or evade, mislead, or clam up. As one character reflects, nobody told nobody nothing save for what they wanted them to know, and even then, they were full of shit, just out of habit. That's why the book is so long. Also, because the author is so exhaustive, compulsively so, a Baroque approach. The book is about the tenth circle of hell. No one would ever want to live in this world, least of all, or maybe most of all, the people who do live in it. They are trapped. They can't get out. The ticket out is death. And that may be exactly why the author recreated it in all of its degraded, grubby, inglorious detail, all of its blind passages, and dead ends. Why the hell would anybody dip themselves in shit like this voluntarily? 
a character wonders, amazed at a job that dealt with an endless parade of shit-skin losers, hunting them down, befriending them in order to get their confessions, then tossing them back into county, could possibly be of interest to anybody who didn't get paid to do it. Thinking about how stinky and small his world is, a character said, Huh, thinking about betrayal and how everything and everybody were just so much smoke. It's the cycle of shit, another says, and you can't do anything about it. A cop catches himself feeling up to his eyeballs in the nothingness of people's lives, everything adding up to a bloody stain on the sidewalk, the only evidence that these people had ever existed. A young doper has a moment of clarity. He would never make it out of here, never rise above his clinging position as Rodney's lieutenant. Because all the intelligence and prudence and vision came to nothing if it wasn't tempered and supported by a certain blindness, an oblivious animal will that he did not have. Even the cops are trapped. Listening to a young waitress who is determined to make it as a painter, one felt a stab of resentment at the open-endedness of her life, at her blissful assumption that she could play an infinite number of roles through the coming years. The author has the skill and insights of an urban anthropologist. He is also driven by a deep sympathy for humans who have run out of hope. He has what one of the lead cops wishes for, a mission. He even has a quiet sense of humor. Sometimes a cop thinks, sometimes a cop thinks, he found it impossible to keep straight what was exactly, what exactly it was that was pissing him off from day to day, hour to hour. The author will be sure to remind him. In fact, it's right around the corner. You can count on it.